Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Shea and I'm president of Alignment Group. This is episode number 208 of The Funnel, Sales Manager's Guide to Team Success, dash A. So why is there an A? Because there's a B. Instead of me saying part one and part two, I decided to do an A and a B this time. So this is a two-part uh, podcast and you'll get the first part right now. So before we get started, head on over to alignment-group.com backslash the funnel and subscribe. If you subscribe, we'll send you the show notes weekly. Let's talk about our agenda. The unique position, leading, the team, consistency, culture, and accountability. So for lack of a better term, this really is a sort of best practices overview for sales managers. Let's start with unique position. And I'll tell you that if I was given a choice, a Sophie's type choice, and someone said to me, would you take a Rainmaker sales rep or a great sales manager? I would take the great sales manager all day. And I've been told I'm crazy. And I'll tell you why. Great sales managers build great teams. It all starts with the sales manager. Everybody knows that building or turning around or fixing a sales team starts with the sales manager. Growth starts with the sales manager. Managers are positioned to really kind of move the needle here. Move a team to success. This is what managers can do, a good manager. Now, I can tell you distractions are team killers. Let me give you a couple of distractions. Distraction number one, firemen, putting out the fires, the, the emergency of the day. Distraction number two, an inordinate amount of meetings. Being pulled into internal meetings for this and internal meetings for that. It'll, it, it'll kill you. And then finally, one of the worst distractions for sales managers are those sales reps that they think show promise and never really get to where they need to go. So they spend a lot of time in development and coaching and helping these sort of bottom feeders, thinking and hoping that they're going to move into the a higher position and it becomes a great distraction and you ignore the middle of the road players that need help to get to be a top player and the top players that you can help drive more revenue. For some reason, managers fall into that sort of uh, category. I see that a lot. I see these types of distractions happen, I, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So as, as I begin to help sales organizations, I want to make sure that if I've identified a good manager, to put them in the position where they can be extremely successful. So let's talk about leading, what it means to be a leader. Oftentimes we see teams that are managed that are sort of, they're, they're not led properly. They're managed. And they rely way too much on stuff. And what I mean by stuff is sort of, here's the, the meeting schedule, here's the meeting cadence, here are the metrics, here are the KPIs. And that's what they spend their, their lives looking at the metrics and the KPIs and saying, you should be doing this. And they're not really leading the team they're, they're managing it. And there's a difference between the two. A good leader knows how to manage. A manager strictly manages, doesn't know how to lead. You got to stop relying on just the metrics. You got to lock arms and you got to work together to become successful. We're going to do this together. We're going to skip down that yellow brick road. I just had the, the, the image of Dorothy and the, and the scarecrow and the lion following the yellow brick road. But you understand what I mean. Right there alongside you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this with you. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to be a part of it. And part of that is motivating. And, and if you remember the last podcast, I talked a little bit about understanding who they are personally. That helps. You want to help them be the best that they're going to be in a way that inspires them to be successful. That's what a leader does. So you have to have that, that best practice going for you. 
Next, I want to talk about the team. And if you've listened for the pot to the podcast for a while, you know what I'm talking about here. You need to build the team. It can't be a ragtag bunch of people who can't sell. It's, you're not a miracle worker. It's not your job to fix every broken person. It's your job to build a successful team. So I'm going to tell you, cut the dead weight. Stop playing around. People who aren't going to make it need to move on. And I will tell you this, and I've said this a thousand times. By the time some sales managers get around to firing somebody or letting somebody go or they quit, the real, the real winners, the people who produce, who do well for the company, look at the manager and say, it's about time. Why did you wait so long? They know before you know. You want to build a winning team? Put winning people in place. Put the right people in place. Focus on hiring the right people. So go back. And start at episode 163. That's how long ago it was. Back in September of 2016. Something like that. August, September. When I went through the whole hiring process. Look at that. That's why managers need to develop their skill set in hiring. It's the old adage, right? When a team goes south, who gets fired first? The coach. You can't fire the whole team, so you get rid of the coach. Do you want to be in that position? Bring in the right people. Learn how to hi- find the right people, assess the right people, learn the hiring process so you can reduce risk, the risk of making a mistake. You will make mistakes. You will hire wrong people. Let's get over that. But reduce the risk, hire the right people, then put a real good onboarding program in place to get them up to speed. Now you have something to work with. Best practice, a good team. Stop waiting for the underperformers to perform. Now I'm going to put a caveat on that. If you haven't put a good hiring process in place, you don't have a good development program, you don't have a good onboarding program, take responsibility for where the team is right now. If you're coming into a situation and it's broken, start fixing it. Consistency. What do I mean about consistency? People like consistency. Everybody does. Well, for the most part, most people do. There's some people out there that just everything in their life has to be spontaneous. Consistency. You preach it as managers to your salespeople. Oftentimes we see managers say, do what I say, not as I do. Meet your commitments, live up to it. So I remember, I've I've told some of these stories before, and this might be new, I don't remember. A rep just telling me they waited when the manager put something new in place. Yeah, they say they're going to meet with me every week. After about six weeks, it dies off. What? What? That's terrible. Meet the consistency is what drives the team. You're going to say, well, there's a lot of other things. Yeah, but if they know the rules of the game, they know exactly what's expected of them. They know when their meetings are going to take place. They know the scheduling. They know how things are going to be tracked. They, you're going to get really good feedback. And you're going to get timely feedback. And you're not walking up and saying, whatever happened to? The worst thing you can say to a rep. Whatever happened to? Managers do it all the time. Whatever happened to that account you were working? That was like a month ago. That was six months ago. And that's like kind of a review. Like, you just walk up and say, hey, whatever happened to? And then there's four people that do that, other managers or owners. They're like, what the heck? They feel like they're be, they're under the microscope, so then they stop sharing and they go do their thing on their own. That's scary. So create some consistency in what you do. Meet all of your commitments. And if you can't, make it infrequent. Yeah, I'm sick today. I can't make our meeting, but I want to reschedule. They want to know what the requirements are. They want to know how they're going to get feedback. They want to know how they're going to get judged. You might think they don't notice the inconsistency, but they do. Think about when you were a rep. You noticed all of it. You knew your rep, your manager's strengths. You knew your manager's weaknesses. I had a great manager years ago in D.C. I was working for a big company, and I had to do a lot of cold calling. 
and she I, she was a great manager, but she hated she hated walking around. You know, with the reps outside the city, she could ride in a car and go appointment to appointment. So what did I do? I used to walk her to death because that's what reps do. Now they look back on it, it wasn't very nice because <laughs> I got really good feedback and really good help. But that's what they notice everything. And here's what I noticed. She kept coming back. It wasn't like, oh, I don't want to go with John. He walks me to death. By the end of the day, I can't move. You know, I'm in the city. I'm walking everywhere. I'm taking cabs. I'm not taking the bus or the man. I'm walking. I might do it now. A little older. Consistency. Culture is next. I can't stress how important culture is. Now, I'm going to tell you, the company culture is the company culture. And I hope it's a good company culture. If it's not, go find someplace else to work. It matters. Culture matters in a very big way. Okay? You set the tone for that for your team. Strategies and processes all day, they fail when the culture sucks. You should have processes. You should have strategies. You should have goals. You should have meetings. But it has to align with the culture. It has to be exciting and fun. It gives you a reason to show up every day. It feels natural. It feels like this is what I'm supposed to do. And it just it works better. If everyone likes each other and they get along and the culture is 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 a cult, one of success and one of support and one of help. That's where it's at. Culture is the lever that, that, that kind of drives everything, as far as I'm concerned. You have a crappy culture. Forget about it. They need to, they need to know that when they come back in the office, that it's a, it's a look, I don't want to get into all the, it's a warm, safe place. Yeah, that they're welcomed. They're not a pariah because they're, they're salespeople. The culture embraces what they do. Never forget accountability. Never forget accountability. Because along with all of that, culture, they have to know they're held accountable for their success. Good, strong KPIs that make sense. I have a rep, a friend of mine that gets pulled in once a quarter to do presentations to senior level managers. He's one of the best presenters I've ever met. Does a great job. Knows what he's doing. Knows how to present the product. Knows how to present proposals. But it's a dog and pony show for senior level management. That's not a good KPI. That's not something you want to do. It's a big waste of time. And they look at that and, and they say, one, culture screwed up when you do that. Two, you're not really holding me accountable to anything that's meaningful. You're not helping me. Can that be good in other areas? Absolutely. Set the expectations for success. This is where we're going to be success, be successful. This is how we're going to be successful. Now, remember when I talked about consistency? Hold them accountable to the outcome. Clearly communicate exactly what it is you want them to do and how you want them to do it. You see how all this comes together? You have a strong culture. You hold people accountable to the consistency that you've laid out. It makes sense to me. It doesn't, this doesn't require A, a tremendous amount of high-level strategic writing. This is about coming to work every day and doing what's right. Find good people, put them in place, lead them while managing, on board, set a consistent message, be consistent in what you do, and manage them to the appropriate KPIs, not the stuff that wastes everybody's time. You, you all know what that's about because we've all been there before. 
next podcast, we'll continue to discuss this topic. Guide to team success. Think about what you need to do as a manager to build a strong sales team. It's okay to think about your failures and your successes. Write them down. Think about where you're missing. And then only commit to do the things that you know you can do. So don't put this wild, crazy plan together that you have no no chance of achieving. Let's say you have too many meetings and you're putting out too many fires. Work on that. Just work on that for a month or two. Cut back the meetings. Cut out the fire drills. Get that to a manageable level. Then move to the next one. Slowly move yourself towards the outcomes you're looking for. Don't write this big plan that you can't achieve. Why? Because that kills the consistency. You started something you couldn't finish. So chunk it down into small bites and do a little at a time. Because you're not if, if you're in complete chaos and you're nowhere near any of this, starting it in, in a day or two days or a week, it's, it's impossible. Review the KPIs. Make sure they match. Those types of things. Subscribe to The Funnel. Head on over to alignment-group.com backslash The Funnel. You can find us on Facebook. My Twitter's at Shay John R. Of course, I'm on LinkedIn, and I said this last last week. I'm going to keep saying it. All of the podcasts are in video format. They're on the website, as well as our YouTube channel. Check it out if you want to see the video. I kind of do a presentation style. So you don't have to look at me sitting in front of the camera. Because when you're looking at the camera and you're sitting at your desk, you're kind of looking at yourself and talking. I have a big ego, but not not that big. Contact us, jshay at alignment-group.com. Website, alignment-group.com. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, keep filling the funnel.